this is a small video about your not your typical SHTF prep. Okay, <laughs> a lot of people, you know, they have food, lights, you know, five C's, whatever you want to call it. But a lot of people don't think about um, things like this, which would be large pistol primers. And some funnels and a wooden dowel, and you guys are wondering what this is going. Where it's going is solid brass 12 gauge shells. Okay, Mad Tech sells them, they're empty. Um, they've got a hole in the bottom of them for you to be able to put your primer right here. Now, this is oh, let me back up, David Canterbury has a video, and you guys should watch it, okay, because it's really, really good. Um, it's about a simple 12-gauge shotgun shell reloading. Gizzy, sit. I got my doom dog next to me. Anyway, this is a primer setter. This is an antique one. What you do is you put the shell in there, you put the primer right here, push it in with your finger, and then you fold this over, and you gently squeeze, and it puts a primer in it for you, okay? I'm not going to put a primer in this one right now. Um, I just was demonstrating it. This I bought off at eBay, I think. Um, they don't make these anymore. Okay? They, they absolutely don't make them. They do not make these. Um, but they used to all hand load. Okay? What you do is you have, I don't have it in here, but you need like a washer or a magnet to punch the primer out. You would put it over something with a hole in the middle of it or on the edge of something. You put this down in there. I'm not going to do it because that's a live primer. You set this down in there and you whack it with your rock or hammer to punch this primer out. Okay? That's what this little punch is for. This little dowel rod thing here is after you get it, get it ready, you have, I've got to get a, me, a powder measure. Okay? You put your measure of powder in here. And then you put a small piece of wadding of some sort, whether it be an old piece of cloth or sheep's wool or, or a piece of cardboard or a piece of leather, whatever you use, okay? And you tamp this down. Then you measure in your shot. Now, if you're not real steady of hand, you can use a funnel, which is what these are in here for, just because I'm not super steady of hand. And then you put your shot in there or rocks or cut up pieces of nail or whatever it is that you're going to be putting in here for your, 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 the item that kills whatever you're shooting. Okay. A lot of people use shot. Well, you know, shots very heavy to carry. Uh, small pebbles or huge grains of sand, however you want to look at it, would work. Okay. Uh, try to get little round ones, you know, you probably have to sift for them. But anyway, you put that in there and then you put another piece of wadding over the top and then you tamp it down. Okay. This is a hot glue stick. After you get your second piece of wadding over the top of the shot, you take a lighter, which is brand spanking new lighter. You better be working. Okay, anyway. Uh, and you melt this glue stick and you swish it around in there to glue that last wadding in place. Okay? Then it's ready to fire. Also, another prep that would be great for post-SHTF would be those, they're called gun adapters. They come from gunadapters.com or net or something like that. What they are is they are on the exterior, they're the same size as this shell, so they fit right into your 12 gauge. They have them for 20 gauges too, I think. Um, and then they've got different size holes, so you can fit like 22 shells, 38s, 357s, 44s, uh, different things. Um, there's got a whole bunch of them. Now for the smaller calibers like 22, I suggest you get the longer one because it's more rifled. Um, accuracy can be an issue with those. You just have to practice a little bit so you're good at it. But it makes your 12 gauge single shot, break open type, or even double barrel, break open type shotgun, it makes it to where you can shoot many different calibers out of it. Okay. Um, like I said, I got this idea from Dave Canterbury over, over there on his YouTube channel. He also has a website. Uh, Wilderness Outfitters, I think is the name of it. Um, but it's a, it's a really, really good idea. Um, this is an excellent idea. So I've got these. I, bought, I ordered a whole box 
it's like 20 or 25 to a box, however many. It's about the same size as a box of shotgun shells uh, that are already ready to go. And I put five or six in here just to have inside this kit, okay? Because I don't want to be without this. Because I, as it stands right now, I've got six or seven large pistol primers in here. That's all I got left, okay? Because I didn't have very many. Friend gave me some. And I got them in this little bag so that they don't get banged on. This right here is an excellent prep to have post-SHTF. It fits in a little tiny bank bag. It's not like it's, it doesn't weigh. It, it, I know it can't weigh over a pound. Probably more like a half a pound. Um, but in order to be able to shoot many different calories, I could fit those gun adapters in here. I'm pretty sure they'd fit. I just have to arrange it a little bit more, you know, uh, organized in there. This is an excellent post-unusual SHTF kit, but do check out David Canterbury's thing. The next one that's unusual that most people don't think of, well, they think of electronics and, and power banks and stuff like that, but they don't think of these. This right here is a solar battery charger, okay? And it'll charge all different kinds of batteries. It'll charge uh, everything but 9 volt, okay? I got rechargeable batteries in there got a little thing that pop, props it up so you can tilt it towards the sun, okay, however what angle you need. It's got a heavy plastic piece over the top of the little solar panels and it's prismed so I guess it funnels the, the light down in. But you can charge all your batteries with this, which means that whatever you have can be sustained, whether it be a light or uh, a radio, um, whatever, whatever it is that you need batteries for. Now, like I said, the only thing it doesn't get is 9 volt. And I have a larger one that's like this. I got it from Harbor Freight. It wasn't too expensive, but I don't really trust it because it came from Harbor Freight. This I ordered off the internet. I didn't, don't remember what I paid for it. Um, I don't even remember who made it, but you could, you can Google that. You can Google that. And then, of course, have a few extra batteries with you. Now, the ones on top are just little triple A's because I don't have any rechargeable triple A's right now. Uh, but I've got the rest of the, I've got the double A's, C's, and D's. So I just put this little partial package of triple A's in here that I got from Harbor Freight for free. Just to basically keep them from rattling around. Oh, and there was one in here with two little C's in there. I don't like to leave the batteries running around loose. Okay, because it, what if they, they, are, they land up against a, a fork and then your axe head comes into contact with the other side. You don't want to start a fire in your bag. So just keep them separate where nothing can ground them. Another thing to have, and I've showed you guys this before, it was in my EDC bag, but I took it out because I've revamped it and my bug out bag, is this hooks to a battery, any battery, you know, that's got a post, and then this is a cigarette lighter pole. Of course, that's for cell phones, and then here's a charge cord for that. If you have more than one item or have three or four items that you want to charge at once, you can get one of these little things. there. Now, a third prep that is not something that you would usually prep for uh, is travel in the winter. Okay, what are you going to do? Um, so, there's one of these snow sleds. This is for somebody to sit on and this got little hand brakes on it. Yeah, whatever. I got it free. I went and took the trash out to the dumpster, and this was sitting right on top. It was brand spanking new, never used. It looks a little dusty right now because I've had it just laying around. <laughs> but if you were to run a cord, a cord around this lip edge, you don't want to try to just tie off to here because this plastic will rip out in no time. Okay, especially if you've got a heavy load on it. This is meant. These these holes are only meant so you can tow it empty. But if you just tie a little loop in here, put a carabiner or something in there, and then run the land, lines underneath this lip edge all the way around. And then out the front, it'll pull from underneath in the back, okay? And then uh, the way you could keep the lines up to keep them from falling down is when you have your load on here, you have your bungee cords going across, and the little hook on the bungee cord goes underneath, and of course, it, the rope is inside that, like that. But this is a good thing if it's snowing. That depends on the, uh, the whatever, you know, whatever uh, camp you fall in, whether... Uh, it's uh, Grand Solar Minimum or Coming Ice Age or not. 
It really just depends on, you know, whatever group you fall in. But this is, a, this is a cheap, easy way to haul gear. Okay, I just took the sticker off of it. It's a cheap, easy way to haul gear in the snow. So you don't have to carry it all. Because if you're fighting knee-deep snow, or even shin-deep snow, you know, if you're fighting snow that dip, you still got to step high and stuff. And if you're carrying a load, it'll wear you out. This will just pull right along behind you. Okay. One thing you need to remember, though, is if this works great on flat ground, okay? But if you're going up and down hills, of course, it's heavier feeling going up the hill. But when you come down the hill, this thing's going to run at you and maybe hit you. So how you get rid of that problem is to get two lengths of, like, PVC pipe. You run your ropes through it, and then the rope or whatever's tied around your waist. And that way the PVC pipe keeps it back. It won't allow it to come run up and hit you in the back of the legs and possibly knock you down a hill and hurt you. So this is a torpedo brand. I don't recommend it. I don't not recommend it. Um, I, I, I got it for free, so that's why I got it. Otherwise, I might not have even thought to get something like this. But with everything going on, you know, and it is wintertime still, and this coat, this, <laughs> everything's covered in snow in the United States, it seems like. This, I thought, would be an excellent item to show you, just in case you hadn't thought of it. Now, a lot of you may have already thought of it, and you already may have that stuff. And, and if you do, then this, you know, this is just extra for you. Now, the last one that I have here is, everybody's talking about gold or silver or platinum or whatever the case may be. I, don't, I can't afford that, flat out. I can't afford it. Uh, I think I've got four pieces of silver one ounce pieces of silver. Two of them I'm keeping just to make sure I have something I can make colloidal silver with. Um, but that's a whole other story. So, if you can't buy gold, what do you do? Post to ship, uh, excuse me, SHTF, you, you, you know, it very, may very well be the most profitable thing to have, being able to purchase with gold. Okay. So, if you can't buy it and you can't store it, you can find it. This I already had. Uh, the, glove, the rubber gloves in case the water's cold. This is a little foldable shovel. You know, I'm not talking about hard rock mining. I'm talking about panning out streams and creeks and things like that. And this is one of those little, it's like a little mini uh, army shovel. And will this thing last very long? Hmm, probably not. I have a little better one. It's about yay long. Okay probably three foot long maybe with the with the handle and the, and the head the shovel heads narrower than a standard shovel this right here of course you know they always want you to do stuff like classify your material so if you want to get rid of the bigger rocks you dump them in here and you shake it um, preferably into a tub like this because you, you want to keep everything that's falling through and then you look through the rocks to make sure that there's no gold nuggets of course and then you just dump it out this right here can be attached to it if you wanted to uh, this is an old fryer basket. I think I got it for 50 cents. Okay, but it, it, it does it does a real good job classifying the stuff down a quarter inch, so you don't have any huge rocks in your pan. And it's fairly durable because it, you know it's a pretty decent size uh, diameter wire. That's, there's nothing in that. Now in here is a few things that you got to have, and um, these are like little picks and pokes. Okay. These are for scraping out the little fine cracks that you can't get your finger down into. So that if you are crevicing, then you will have the items to, to loosen that up. And then in here are two snuffer bottles to suck the gold up out of the pan. Now in here, what I have is just, I have glass vials to put the gold in. I've got it in this little coin purse. It's fairly padded. I don't expect any, unless something really smashes it, it should be fine and not break. Okay. Now this is a, is a jeweler's loop, which if you really don't know what you're looking at, you, you might need one of those. This is not necessarily a, a must-have for hunting for gold, but it's nice to have. This one's lighted, but I, I think the battery's dead on it. And this is what they call a gold magnet. magnet. And no, it doesn't pick up gold. Okay, gold magnets do not pick up gold. They pick up lead-laced uh, lead sand. You can also put these. If you if you if you've got a lot of a lot of black sand in here and you and having a hard time getting it 
um, separated, you can either do it from underneath, where it'll draw the, this black sand, the magnetic black sand away, or you can do it from the top. Make sure that when you let go of this and the black sand falls away, that you do it into another container. You don't want to, because some gold could be caught up with it. Okay? So that's a gold magnet. Now these are just a couple old gold pans I have. I just got them carabined together because I can actually carabine this to the top back of my pack and it'll ride on the outside. These weigh very little. I mean, they're just like plastic. That one's gonna need to replace though because it's cracking. This is a classifier down to a half inch. Okay, And then this is the gold pan with the big thick edges. Now this is one I haven't really used. It's all dusty looking, but I only used it like once. Um, it's supposed to be easier to get gold out of this one. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not. But I figured if a person needed to have a, an extra pan just in case, this one would do the trick because it weighs, you know, a couple ounces. It doesn't weigh hardly anything. And then that is an unusual prep. Now this, if you're already loaded down with gear, you might not be able to take this stuff, okay? But if you have a conveyance, such as the sled, or a bike trailer, or a vehicle, or you know, just are a big strong person and can actually carry this stuff on the outside of your pack. Because this, you don't absolutely have to have this basket to cut for gold. You need the stuff that's in it, except that. Um, and then this is empty. So the stuff inside the basket really doesn't take up much room. This is like three or four pounds though. So you're looking at about five pounds for the whole setup. And that's that. And I think... Let me look around, just make sure I didn't, oh yeah, a net. A lot of people talk about nets. This is something I got from the junkyard. It is one of those cargo nets that goes in the back of a vehicle. It's elastic on the top. You know, it's just like a little envelope. If you had room in your pack for something like this, you could string this up and put your stuff in it. You could put it together and hoist your food up in a tree if you're afraid of bears or anything getting into your food, okay? Uh, <laughs> you could hang it up across anywhere really that you just need a little extra something that you can get a hold of quickly. And speaking of nets, there's this one. This is great. This thing doesn't weigh nothing. I mean, it's like the, the weight of a scarf and it, and it folds up to like, you know, the size of a half of a baseball. That's if you, if you just squish it down. This is great for carrying all kinds of things. You can carry tinder. You can carry leaves if you're trying to make yourself a bed. You can use it to save for, for minnows, for bait, if you want to go fishing. You can use it for uh, putting your laundry in. Tie, tie a rope around it, throw it in a running creek, and let the creek wash and wash and wash your clothes. A lot of things you can use, one of these little cheap bags. This was like a dollar, at, I think it was Dollar Tree. Uh, this is not very durable, so just expect that this thing won't be very durable because it's not. It's really thin. I can rip it with my two hands if I wanted to. I'm not going to show you how easy it is to rip, but I have ripped one before. I stuffed some firewood in it to see how much it would hold and the firewood ripped it. So do keep that in mind if you have something like this. And that is it, my friends. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And tell your friends about me. I need all the help I can get to make my channel a success. Um, Y'all come back and see me.